Namaste everyone and welcome to Friday I'm doing our prosperity healing. Now before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, we humbly ask for your blessings. Thank you for divine light. Thank you for guidance. Thank you for help. Thank you for healing energy. Thank you for prosperity and abundance. And thank you for divine protection. To my teacher, Master Tsukok Sui Mahagu Jumailing, thank you in full faith. So it is. All right, namaste again. And a lot of you um, are interested in prosperity healing. Let's just talk a little bit about that very quickly so you, you have context of what we're doing. You know, oftentimes people think there's a conflict between prosperity and spirituality. And oftentimes people are upset that, hey, how come they cannot be spiritual and prosperous at the same time? Or when people are becoming very prosperous, they start to worry about, oh, they're going to lose their spiritual uh, their spirituality or their spiritual path. When in reality, as we always say, there are two sides of this coin. And a big part of it has to do with the thoughts and emotions that we've created for ourselves. Part of it is growing up, we always hear stories of the poor guy is going to heaven and the rich guy is, you know, barbecuing and roasting in hell. So because of that, they have thought forms or emotional forms that are in the aura. And so when you try to be successful, these things have a tendency to pop up and become a hindrance. You know, in other words, you hear people about doing self-sabotage. A big part of it is because of those thoughts and emotions. And oftentimes, about it, hey, you know, you're trying to be successful with your job, your business, you're trying to start a new venture, and you start going, this is weird. How come I'm having these thoughts, and yet they're not related to what's going on, but somehow it makes me doubt myself. And then before you know it, what goes through your mind? Well, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe, you know, since I didn't succeed 20 years ago in high school because of a whatever woodworking shop, you flunk that one, and then you start doubting yourself of a present project. If you think about it, there's nothing to do with that. Make sense? And all of it is just thought forms that are sitting in the aura. And oftentimes you hear people say, no problem, just do, you know, Whatever technique is, it is that uh, you say, oh, these are not me. Okay, that's good, right? You know, these are not my thoughts. Or you do affirmations. Oh, I'm good enough. I'm this, I'm that. And you say, oh, it works. And then after a while, you fall back again. The question is why. This is where you harness the power of your real self, the soul. This is where spirituality becomes the source of your real power. You see... When you do affirmations, I'm this, I'm that, and whatever else you're doing, you're using your brute force, you're using your will to overcome all these thoughts and emotions we have in the past. Okay? So, you essentially, as we always say, my teacher taught me, big fish eat small fish. The big fish <laughs> will gobble up the small ones. Just imagine these are the thoughts and emotions we created. So, right now, if you make an affirmation, I am so successful, I am getting things done, blah, 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 and so on, so on. So if you just do that, that's great. That's the small fish. The big fish is the basically the accumulation of all the thought and thoughts and emotions sitting in your aura for the last 10 years, 20 years, or whatever years. So whatever affirmation you make right now, it has to overcome all that. And if you're not vigilant, now and then you kind of, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to do my affirmation. <laughs> it's gone. So you're starting from scratch again. Make sense? Now, the secret is using spiritual power. So he said, what do you mean by spiritual power? You're using spiritual energy to do two things. Number one, you use as your fire hose. Because oftentimes, these thoughts and emotions that pass, you know, they cling on to your aura and your chakras. You know, like Star Trek, cling on? No, okay, forget it. Anyway, it attaches to your aura and your chakras. So when you make affirmation on this, it's just like pushing against a big rock. So instead of pushing against a big rock, <laughs> you take a big fire hose, <laughs> crank up, the water pressure, oh, psh, blast it out of your way. And so when you do your meditation and spiritual practice, you widen your spiritual connection, let the energy come down, and guide that energy chakra by chakra to flush things out. That's part one. Part two, once you're already spiritually more connected to who you are, to God, the higher beings, angelic beings, you know, different people have different perceptions of this, then you use that energy to say, I am the self. I am the spiritual self. I am the soul. So as you recognize who you are, the lingering thoughts and emotions that do not get flushed out during the meditation 
will now be in front of you. Okay? So now you're going to disidentify yourself with them. Like these thoughts, emotions, these are not the, not the I. I created them before, but they're not me. So right there and then they lose their grab on you. Make sense? They lose their bite because you're now disidentifying. So when you disidentify, it's like a cord or connection is cut. So they're now in front of you. You can observe it and you can disintegrate it. Now, instead of using brute force, oh, yeah, I'm not this and that, you use the energies coming in. You're now very spiritually connected. You affirm who you are. You have your power, your energy, and then you say, okay, this worry, this and that, this happened in third grade. Anyway, at that time, it was traumatic, but these are not my thoughts. I created it at that time, but they don't serve me anymore. Out of here. Right there and there, most people go, wow, I feel so free. Then the next step after that, after you wipe it clean, now you start installation. You know, just like you wipe out your old programming, <laughs> your old apps, your old programs, right? And then you install new apps, new applications, new programs. So that once you press play, in other words, when you, you start going on any project, anything you want to be successful, anything from money to, to I don't know, uh, a job application, uh, a new venture, only the new programming is working. The old stuff has been substantially removed. Now, even if you have little stuff coming up from the past, remember, big fish eat small fish. You've gotten rid of both of the big fish. Any small fish that comes in, your positive thought forms and energy will gobble it up, neutralize it. You go, wow, how come it's so systematic? Because it is. You know, that's exactly the problem. Most people think, well, I just feel, do like what I feel like it. You cannot depend on what you feel if you have not trained your emotions and your thoughts, going back to the horses. You cannot say, okay, ride the horse that you just got that have not been trained. Okay, take me. They're going to go all over the place. But once the horses are trained, then you can just lightly guide them with your reins. So if the emotional body, the mental body, the physical body have not been trained by the soul, being spontaneous is a formula for disaster. That's why I've known people who, who they're like, oh, I'm a spiritual person. I just let everything in the universe come to me and I should just go with the flow. Uh, how trained are your horses? They're not trained. You're going to flow down to disaster. Because without discipline, your emotions, your body, your thoughts are not dependable. Get the idea? That's why you notice there's some people, oh, yeah, just go with the flow. Let everything flow. Yeah, you're flowing down the toilet. But once you establish a certain protocol that you've been doing your meditations, you've been trying to follow the virtues, you've been trying to discipline your life. I'm not talking about like super high, but just, you know, a certain level of control. Like, oh, okay, I'm the spiritual self. I'm going to control my emotions, my body, my thoughts. You have a certain level of control. Then it's just like the horses that are already semi-trained. Then you can uh, kind of let loose a little bit and let information come in. Make sense? Now, I hear people say, oh, I'm getting my download. Like quality, like quality is attract, buddy. If your aura is clean, then you attract higher frequencies. Angelic beings, teachers, saints. Now, if your emotions are full of crap, well, you know what kind of download you're getting. Clear? So it's no shortcut in the sense that, oh, I don't have to do any practice. There's no discipline. I just let it happen. Mm -hmm. How come your life is still a mess after 30, 40, 50 years? Because there's no discipline. Without discipline, everything goes down the drain. Everything from uh, your inner peace and stillness, you know, or people like to quote left and right law of attraction. I've seen people quote law of attraction because they're lazy butts. You're hurting my feet. In other words, they don't want to do the work. They just want to say, I just attract good energy. Well, if you don't clean out the crap in your system, yeah, there is law of attraction, but it's not attracting what you want. But if you clear out the stuff out of your aura, there's clarity, there's love, there's joy, you know, you raise your frequency, then that is working for you, not against you. People use spirituality to justify their laziness. How do I know? I was the poster child. Before I met my teacher, I was like, oh, spirituality, I just, whatever comes to me is good. You know, the universe is abundant, blah, 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 blah. I, I was not going to do the work because I feel I just do my affirmations and visualize this and things will happen. Then I met my teacher. Then a sledgehammer came out. Uh-oh. And the whip. <laughs> I mean, you know, not physically, of course. 
But he was noticing this rebellious, you know, useless kid. He didn't say that, but this probably was in his head. So for the longest time, <laughs> you know why? You know what he was hammering? My stupid ego. I had such a big head. I thought I knew everything. I'm this, I'm that. Read so many books and affirmations and this, and I thought I knew everything. In fact, I thought I knew better than the teacher. So I, didn't, I have no clue why he took the time <laughs> and the patience <laughs> to work with me with, when there's so many people who are probably easier to mold. And then um, it's interesting that a few years ago, one of my uh, good friends, Tom Park, uh, you know, some of you know, he was organizing classes for us in Pranic Healing. He had another spiritual, uh, he belonged to another spiritual organization with a spiritual teacher. And I was sharing some of these stories and he said, no, you know what? I remember what my teacher said to me. He said, he said, his teacher told him, he's like, the teacher is like a blacksmith holding a piece of metal with a hammer, with a mallet. And the teacher will keep pounding on that. But the hint entire time, the teacher is supporting the student from the background. And as the teacher hammers the student, getting rid of the old habits, the bad uh, tendencies, whatever, you know, the whole time it might be like a sledgehammer hitting you, but it's all done molding you. It's not like bang, and just, you know, you're broken. No, the teacher gently hits you sometimes harder, whatever, just so that it molds the right type of character in the student. And I thought about it, go, ouch. That's why I have, you know, bumps on top of my bumps all those years. And that's why I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to my teacher, not, well, not, but not only for the spiritual lessons that it's like, oh, mind-boggling information about the cosmos, about spirituality, about the soul. All those are wonderful and great. I'm ever so grateful. But if I were to pick what I'm most grateful for are the lumps on my head. <laughs> Those are the biggest blessings my, my teacher gave me. Because if he gave me all these great spiritual teachings, but did not knock the crap out of me, <laughs> literally, I would not have known how to appreciate the deeper teachings he gave. Do you get my point? So when I share with you these things that are, that sounds harsh, that sounds like too direct, like I'm kicking your ass, <laughs> is because... For me, that has worked the most because I know if you did not get rid of a lot of my old tendencies, my negative beliefs, my prideful thoughts, I would not be able to absorb the teachings he gave and the blessings that come from God. So we go back to the basis, <laughs> the basics of pranic healing, cleansing before energizing. The problem is some people... They don't want to clean. They just want to stuff with good stuff. And then, you know, it's just like some of you received healing where you actually got worse before you got better. Right? You call it a crisis. Uh, yeah. Like a crisis reaction or whatever. What happens is every time there's an ailment, there's basically a lump of disease or dirty energy on the surface. And what most healers do, because they're not aware of cleansing, they just put Good energy in, so the good energy, part of it cleans out the negative ones, part of it transmutes. But if there's so much negative energy blocking the aura and the chakras, it pushes it deeper. So once it's pushed deeper, temporarily the person feels better. And after the healer leaves, this stuff comes to the surface. That's why people have what? Uh, Flu-like symptoms, fatigue, diarrhea, vomiting. And of course the healer will tell you, oh, it's okay, you're detoxing, which is true. But the question is, what if... There's a way of experiencing the good stuff without having to go, go to that detox. What do you do? You actively clean. Same thing with our spiritual path. If we just do our meditation and just bring good energy, prosperity energy, whatever, but we don't release the old stuff, in the meantime, if you oh yeah, man, after the practice, you feel good, then after a while, <laughs> sounds familiar? We've all been there. That's why we're so crazy about cleaning, 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 cleaning. Even with prosperity, which is what we're going to do now, you want to get rid of a lot of this old belief system before you're doing your affirmations. Otherwise, the affirmations is sitting on top of crap. It's just like building a whole building on a foundation when it's, uh, what do you call this? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a landfill. You know what I mean? If it's a landfill, 
That means all the stuff in there is from the past, just garbage. So you want to get rid of it so you have a solid, solid foundation. Make sense? Just keep that in mind. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a short technique. Uh, this is what we do in Prosperity Zen. Now, a lot of you have um, joined that. that is, this is from last week's practice of how to get rid of thoughts and emotions that you're not good enough. Okay? We'll do a short practice because the, the one Prosperity Zen is very thorough. But for now, at least we have something you can use because that's what we told you when we first um, gave the introduction that on Fridays we'll try to match whatever we're going through in Prosperity Zen. So let's do our meditation first. Make sure we bring down massive amount of spiritual energy. Open up that waterfall. And then we use it as a fire hose to go through all the chakras and get rid of it. Okay? Shall we? To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you for your blessings. To my teacher, Master Tokok Sui, Maha Guji Meiling, thank you for the blessings. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, especially the angels of prosperity, thank you for your blessings. In full faith, so it is. All right. Put your hand like this. Put your attention on your crown. I am that. I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotions. I'm not the thoughts. These are not the I. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. The soul. The spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit, the divine spark in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Now just be still. Open your palms in blessing. We'll do a very short meditation between hearts to just activate the upper chakras, bring the spiritual energy down, okay? Visualize the earth in front of you. Put your attention in your heart, your hands. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with peace and with love. With this injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. With this doubt, let me sow faith. With this despair, let me sow hope. Let's just think of people we know who might be going through difficult times or challenging times in their life with their health, with their finances, with their relationships, or any part of their life. Visualize their lives turning around and getting better, blessing them with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. And where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Be aware of your heart. Say, our hearts are one. May every person, every being on earth be blessed with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. So be it. So it is. Be still. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. And stay there. Just be still, tongue on your palate. You might feel a pressure or, or a tingling in your crown that your crown expanding. Be aware of your crown. Be aware of your hands. Imagine golden light flowing from your crown down through your hands to the entire earth. Flood the earth with golden light. Your family, your friends, the city, the state, the country you live in, let that golden light just spread everywhere. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being. May every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. Just pour it on. Pour that golden light everywhere. So it is. Now be aware of your heart and your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. 
Exhale, imagine beautiful golden light just pouring down through your hands to the entire earth. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let every sentient being in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing, and at this time, in many places, physical and financial healing and relationship healing. Let all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, with goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Be still. Now gently lower your hands on your lap. Keep your tongue on your palate. Keep your eyes closed. A few inches above your crown, imagine a beautiful golden flame. Just look at that golden flame. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Gently send a stream of love from your heart up, up to your throat. Gently up, up, up to the center of your head. Be still. Allow it to gently float up to your crown. Pass your crown and into that beautiful golden flame. And stay there. Your entire awareness and consciousness are dissolving deeper and deeper into that golden light. Stay there. And listen from within that golden flame. Om. to just naturally drift deeper and deeper into that inner stillness and let go now. Be still and be receptive. Let go. Now.
deeper. Allow your awareness, your entire attention, you the soul, the spiritual self, to be deeply immersed in that ocean of light, beautiful ocean of golden light. Your entire being is like a sponge inside an ocean of golden light. Let go. Let it permeate your entire being now. Gently, slowly, come back to your body. Gently and slowly move your fingers and your toes. Raise your hands in blessing. Let's just release the excess energy. Visualize the earth in front of you. Let the entire earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let the entire earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. So be it. Visualize the people you love, your family, your friends. Flood them all with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine, your hands. Just flood the earth below you with golden light. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, revitalized. Blessings be to all. So be it, so be it, and so it is. Thank you. All right. I know, we made it short, so we have time to do the other part. So that's the prep. Remember, the syntax, the sequence is important. You don't put, uh, you know, the horse in front of the carriage, as they say. So now you've established the connection. You notice very calm, very still. That allows you to be able to observe. See, most people don't realize this. When you're going all over the place, it's hard to watch because you're seeing through a filter. That filter is your aura and your chakras. Make sense? That's why it's always easier to give somebody advice. Because if you're looking from a different viewpoint, you know, you're not affected by the circumstance. It's easy to be objective, easy to observe. Well, if you can't have that, then just do your meditation properly. It cleans most of it out so you're able to see clearly. Now we do the practice. Make sense? All right. Here we go. Put your hand like this. Come on. Imagine the white movie screen. Slap it on the wall in front of you. Okay, imagine a big screen, you know, like watching a movie. Now, the question is, why is that a big screen? Uh, because we have a lot of crap from the past. <laughs> okay? So, you don't want to be like this and go, <laughs> big screen. Okay. IMAX. <laughs> Huge. Okay. Ready? Okay, here's what you're going to do. I want you to think. You can observe. Recall. This person's life, which is actually yours, but you're going to look at it. Okay? In the past. What type of situations have happened that you felt inadequate? You felt like you're not good enough. Maybe you failed you know, math in high school. Or 30 years ago, uh, you had a relationship that didn't work out. Whatever it is, we don't really care. They're just thought forms. Put it on the screen. Just like watching a movie. Okay? Could be a movie. Could be just a snapshot, a picture. Or if it's just a feeling, you can say, oh, there's this feeling. I cannot really put a picture. That, imagine a gray cloud on the screen. Go. Take your time. Whatever it is. It could be anything. It could be a failed relationship. It could be uh, you got fired or, you know, you got blamed for something you didn't do. Or you really screwed up. I mean, all of us make mistakes. Put it on the screen. Because all these thoughts and emotions from the past come to the surface every time you try to do something. So you're proactively shoveling them out. Okay. Put it on the screen. Watch it. Here's the key. You're the soul observing. Just observe. Or put yourself like a third person watching someone else's life. Put it on the screen. Anything. 
something could be like, uh, you were not good enough because uh, your parents never gave you, uh, what do you call it, the appreciation, or they didn't recognize you, but you did it, but somehow that still affects you. Put it on the screen. It could be a movie, it could be a feeling, doesn't matter, we don't care, dump it on the screen. Or let's say a friend or somebody says, oh, you did this, you did that, you're not good enough, or they didn't mean anything bad, but it affected you deeply. Put it on the screen. Come on, we're doing a big, uh, <laughs> big garbage haul here. Okay. Ready? Now follow me quickly. Imagine you have a big lump of dark blue paint. Okay, don't change, change the technique. Dark blue paint. Now cover up the entire screen with dark blue paint. Lots and lots, layers and layers of dark blue paint. So much so that entire screen, that IMAX screen, is now covered in dark blue paint. So much, you cannot see any light coming out of it. No, it's dark. All the pictures, the images, the thing, they're now smudged in dark blue paint. Move your hand. Don't go, I'll do it like this, then you're useless. Come on. Dark blue paint. Okay, good. Ready? Now, to exercise your control that you are the soul, say, I am the soul. I am the spirit yourself. I am the mover of my body, feeler of my feelings, thinker of my thoughts. I am the soul. I am a being of divine power. I go like this. Just reach out, grab that screen from the wall with force, yank it off. Come on, just follow simple instructions. Yank it off. Now, crumple it. Come on, move your hand, crumple it, crumple it. Like this. It's so tiny compared to you. Now go like this. You are not me. These thoughts, these emotions, they are not the I. I created them. I am the soul. I created them. But these are not me. These are not the I. I created them, but they have no power over me now. So be it. Now follow me. Go like this. Cut. Disconnect. Look for your salt water. Say disintegrate. 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 Cut. Disintegrate. Okay. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale with a moan. Direct it to the salt water. Again, take a deep breath. Exhale. Just with intention, drain it to the salt water. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Let it drain to the salt water. See, I disconnect from all these energies now. Cut. All right. You're not done yet. Okay. Open your eyes. Look at me. Okay, sit straight. Look at the ceiling. This triggers certain alpha waves. You guys know this already. But at the same time, it activates your forehead chakra. Okay, sit straight. Look up. As you look up, close your eyelids. Now in the sky, just visualize a beautiful golden screen. Yeah, same huge IMAX, but maybe times 10. Made of gold. Now picture yourself being good enough. You being successful in your health making your health better, you picture yourself having a wonderful, fulfilling relationship, whatever it is that you, it's the opposite of what you did earlier, what you experienced earlier, that you have more money that you can spend and you're using it properly to help people in need. Now smile. Or you're looking for a job and you got that job that you wanted and you're very happy and fulfilled. And because of that, you can feed your family, you can do charity work, and a lot of you on the spiritual path find that you have the independence, the time to do your meditation anytime you like, to take off to a mountain if you want to, go to sit at the beach, wherever it is. It gives you freedom. Be happy about it. Just fill up that entire IMAX screen. Smile. Be happy about it. Keep going. Inhale. Hold, exhale. Keep looking at that beautiful golden picture. Inhale. Hold, exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold, exhale. Hold. Inhale, hold, exhale. Just keep smiling and looking at your beautiful golden image. Inhale, 
Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Again, inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Now just be still. Keep looking at that golden image in front of you. We're going to energize it. We're going to charge it. If you're sensitive, you can just put your hand like this. You can open your eyes. Don't worry. It's not going to go away. Just put your hand like this, like you're trying to feel its energy. Okay, ready? As your heart desires. How's that feel? If you're sensitive, you might feel like building up, right? Okay, ready? Put your hand like this. Imagine taking that image and just bring it into your system. Just kind of put it inside your aura. Take a deep breath, inhale it. Exhale. Put your hand down. Just be still. Just be still. All right, slowly open your eyes. How do you feel? That's the difference when we do prosperity healing compared to just making affirmations because we involve energy. How do you feel? How are your thoughts? Anybody know this? Yeah, we can do this. Exactly. That's the secret. Every time you involve energy, it's going to be faster. You know why? It goes back to the same simple premise. You need energy to get rid of energy. You need energy to build up energy. And people think, oh, yeah, all those Africans. That's good. You're also creating a certain energy. But what we do in Pranaking or Hatha Yoga, in the way, the way I was taught by my teachers, you understand energy as literally a certain frequency or wave or whatever it is, and you approach it from that viewpoint so you can handle it. That's it. So some of you who are in, uh, not some of you, a lot of you who are in uh, Prosperity Zen, does the technique <laughs> feel familiar? So in Prosperity Zen, we dive into it. We do it, we use the power of rituals. We do everything seven times, and then as you do it, you know, we also, as a teacher, we, I say we, I'm not the one, they're doing it through me, we super duper charge it. That's that, very simple. So anyway, the ones who have not... Um, Practice it yet? Go to magical.org, the Prosperity Zen introduction. It's, you know, just click on it. It's free. You can practice it. And if you want to join the nine-week program, you can. If you don't want to, at least you have something to practice with. All right? I hope you're feeling good. Now, before we finish, tonight is the full moon meditation. Okay? Now, something to remember. Full moon is not directly affected by the moon. <laughs> Okay? What it is, the moon is reflective of the energy from the sun. That's why it's full. It does air it anyway. You, you know astronomy. The point is this. Spiritually and energetically, that means there's more energy coming into the earth. That's why it has magnifying effect of good and the not so good. So uh, what we do tonight is we'll do meditation to flush out more of our old energy and then make sure your goals and wishes that you want to be successful, write it down, have it in front of you. After the meditation, we'll pack it with even more energy. You can use the same image we did now. Make sense? Okay, now, in addition to that, we're having the lecture, The Five Hindrances to Spiritual Mastery. You know, a lot of people, that the number one uh, complaint they always have, like when I go to UPW with how many thousands of people, you know, the comment we always get is like, oh, I've never been able to meditate before, now I can. So we're going to cover five hindrances. This is a Buddhist tradition. What are the five obstacles or hindrances to meditational practice? But me being my student, my teacher, would crank it one more level higher or many more levels higher. We look at it. How do the five hindrances actually slow down or affect you in your total spiritual mastery? And we're going to look at it from the viewpoint of the soul. It's not looked at as the soul because in the traditional Buddhist teaching, there is no soul, there's no self. 
So that's why, if you notice, if you got the email, we said, you know, we're going to talk about the five hindrances, but we're going to break away from traditional Buddhist practices where they say there's no self and look at it purely from the viewpoint of the soul. So we'll do that tonight. So that's, um, we're going to match it the same time as Anchor the Light. So it'll be seven hours and 15 minutes from now. Okay. So grab your friends, your loved ones, bring them all in. Uh, I promise not to get too weird. <laughs> Okay, I'll be a little gentler because it's a bigger audience. And uh, after the talk, we'll do our meditation. We'll do the fire hose technique, clean everything out. We'll use the energy to, we, all of us, will use the energy to bless our projects so you can all be happy and successful. All right? So we will see you tonight. God bless. Take care. And by the way, this uh, meditation we did today and the entire thing is staying online so you can go back and practice it more and more. You want to go more in-depth. You go to the magical.org for the Prosperity Zen Introductory Workshop. You want to go more in depth, you can go to the program. You know, we give you choices, whatever you like. It depends on how deeply you want to go and how successful you want to be. Namaste, everyone. Let's give thanks to the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. To my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tsohokswi, Mahagu Jumeiling, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Om. Amen. Amin. Tastu. And so it is. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, thank you for allowing me to serve you. Please leave your comments on whatever platform you're looking at. And again, for Instagram, if you guys have figured it out, I don't know, when you guys, when I'm doing this, I see you guys typing and writing, but somehow when we turn it off, <laughs> it disappears. So you can copy and paste that and put it in the comments. I'd like to see what you guys said. You don't like me? That's perfectly fine. You like it? Tell people. Namaste. You all take care. God bless. We'll see you tonight.